someone brought to my attention that my peas in the videos are popping, so I'll buy my filter soon. Sorry about the peas in this video and perhaps the next one. This is ignoring the gaming videos that nobody watches. I'm probably not going to include this option again for a while to add more variety in my videos, but if you guys are interested in more black leaders, let me know. As always, I apologize in advance because I will butcher these names, so I will write them on the screen while doing my best to pronounce them. Number 5. Kandaka Amani Renes. Her title, Kandaka signifying Extraordinary Lady, which could be compared to a uh, Queen Mother. She was a warrior queen of the ancient African kingdom of Kush, and she was best known for protecting her kingdom against the Roman invasions. The Roman triumph of Egypt in 30 BC prompted further invasions south towards Kush. In 27 BC, the Kushites launched an aggressive assault on Roman-held cities in southern Egypt after Cornelius Gallus, the new Roman governor of Egypt, attempted to impose taxation on Kush-controlled Lower Nubia. The Kushites won their first victories at Philae and Syene, which is now Aswan in Egypt. After the Kushite victory in Syene in 24 BC, the city was looted and Augustus statues were vandalized. A bronze head of the emperor was brought to the royal palace and buried under the entrance. As a result, peace talks began in Dhaka in 24 BC. Basically, the non-aggression treaty perceived an impasse among the Roman Kush. The queen had saved her kin hundreds of years of control by effectively opposing Rome. In contrast to different realms at the edge of Europe, Africa, or Asia, she didn't surrender enormous areas of her domain and never had to offer recognition or contribute material assets to Rome. Number 4. King Tonkaminin, the last emperor of Ghana. First, I need to clarify that Ghana back then wasn't the Ghana that exists now because current Ghana adopted the name in March 1957 in reference to the prestigious empire and got rid of its colonial name, British Gold Coast. Of course, it was the British who else. According to contemporary accounts, he was a champion of justice and personally resolved numerous disputes within his empire. He became well known for his work to improve the empire's economy and his involvement in local communities by projecting an air of magic and mysticism, and he was able to improve his public image further. His empire became quickly the envy of their neighbors. The Almoravid invaded ancient Ghana and Tunka successfully repelled some of the assaults on the empire. He is said to have commanded 200,000 warriors. Number 3. Askia the Great Now I have to apologize for using images from games because these are the only interpretations of him that I can find. Askia Muhammad I was born in Futaturu and was an emperor, military commander, and a political reformer of the Songhai Empire in the late 15th century. He strengthened his empire and made it the largest in West Africa's history. At its peak, under his reign, the Songhai Empire encompassed the Hausa states as far as Kano, which is northern Nigeria, and much of the territory that had belonged to the Songhai Empire in the west. His policies resulted in a rapid expansion of trade with Europe and Asia and the creation of many schools. He orchestrated the expansion of consolidation, which extended the empire from Tagaza in the north to the borders of Yatenga in the south. Number 2. Emperor Menelik II As one of the most well-known Ethiopian kings, with Menelik II started the modernization of Ethiopia. Telephones, cinema, railways, newspapers, school, and more were introduced to the country. Before Melek's colonial conquests, Ethiopia had been devastated by numerous wars, the most recent of which was fought in the 16th century. Melek began a series of wars to conquer land for the Ethiopian Empire and increase Shiwan supremacy. Of the areas conquered and pacified, Arsi Oromos, Gurej, Kafa, Emirate of Harar, Mahdist state. Uh, okay, I give up. I'm just gonna show those on the screen. Sorry. Empress Tatiu Bitul, the third wife of Menelaus II, camped at a hot spring in the south of Mount Intutu. She decided to build a house there, and from 1887, this was her permanent base, which she named Addis Ababa, which means the new flower, thus, was the capital for Ethiopia until today. During that time, Ethiopia had signed the Treaty of Wochale with Italy, and through that, Ethiopia would get aid through food, guns, and supplies generally from Italy, but Ethiopia would only deal with foreign governments through Italy. 
According to Italy, this meant that Ethiopia was a puppet government for the Italian government. Menelik renounced that part of the treaty and well, that means war. The Ethiopians shocked the world by being the only country to survive the scramble for Africa and thus remaining independent from any colonial control. Number 1. Mansa Musa Easily the most well-known guy on this list because of how rich he was. He became the first Muslim ruler in West Africa to make the nearly 4,000 mile journey to Mecca. He was accompanied by a caravan consisting of 60,000 men, including 12,000 richly dressed servants and supporters. Musa made generous donations to the poor and to the charitable organizations as well as the rulers of the lands uh, his entourage crossed. On his stop in Cairo, Egypt, the emperor gave out so much gold that he generated a brief decline in its value. Cairo's gold market recovered over a decade later. Upon his return from Mecca, Mansa Musa brought Arab scholars, government bureaucrats, and architects. His pilgrimage boosted Islamic education in Mali by adding mosques, libraries, and universities. I hope you guys learned something new today. If you liked this video, I have another one just like it in the playlist that this video is supposed to be in. I tried my best to keep it short, so I'm signing out. Bye.